Have you ever met the connector? Well, he ponders, he helps, he creates, he writes, he speaks. He basically connects people and brings them together. I speak about Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group. At psandallmarketinggroup.com, you will receive an assembled group of Paul's contacts and connections that cross into many sectors of life. Please contact Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com if you are in the market for a wide array of services. Again, please contact The Connecta, Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com with any questions. And now... Here's Paul Solano, the host of Paul Ponders. Welcome to Paul Ponders. My name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com. Thank you for joining me for my foray into podcasting. It is great to be collaborating with my friend and associate, Chalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, to bring you some fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. For many years, I've been referred to as the Connector, or in Greater Boston Circles, as the Connector. With PSNLMarketingGroup.com, I've created a side gate to connect you and get things done. Please sit back and relax and listen to today's podcast. If you are driving or operating heavy machinery and just listening, then please just listen and stay focused on your task at hand. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy my ponderings. Let hashtag Paul Ponders begin. Greetings, everyone. How is everyone doing today? It's great to have you back. Thank you so much for tuning in, logging in to hashtag Paul Ponders, part of the Pod Pro Entertainment Network. I want to thank Techie Talonzo behind the curtain, behind the glass, wherever he is, but he's doing a fabulous job providing us with another wonderful, wonderful segment. And a quick shout out to Scott Albertson of Project 142, hashtag Project 142, scottalbertson.com. Scott with one T, Albertson, S-O-N. Scott does a great job marketing Paul Ponder's podcast and PS and All Marketing Group. If you ever need any marketing needs, please tune in to go check out hashtag Project 142 or hashtag scottalbertson.com. So when I think back to the past episodes that, that I've had, I've had some really great episodes. This is episode number 36, I believe. And I think back to the connectiveness, the ps and marketing group. And um, as you hear in the intro from Sharon, I am the connector. So, episode 21, dear friend Dom Sato, world powerlifting champ, episode number 25, Marty Gabriella, who is a um, retired Middlesex County Sheriff employee and very involved with NEMLAC, they both said, you know, there's one guest you really have to get on. And I said, who would that be? And they said, it is Mr. Jim DJ Vittorio. Jim, welcome. Thank you, Paul. It's really great to have you. So just I'm just going to um, just do a quick intro as to the connectiveness of this. So Dom and Marty both said that you have to have Chef Jim on, but he's also Chief Jim. So I said, oh, wait, is this the gentleman I saw on Chronicle recently? And they said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's him. He's a great guy. And from speaking with you, Jim, okay, you are a retired Middleton police chief, law enforcement officer. I thank you for your, your service in law enforcement. And you wear so many different hats. So um, in the bio, which we posted, the name of this episode is From Chef to Chief to Chef. You have a very illustrious career in the world of law enforcement cooking, catering. Please, Jim, welcome again, and please tell us about yourself. Thanks, Paul. 
Well, you're welcome. I started out as being a cook years ago. My first job was uh, shucking clams and saugus by, with Andy Seafood. I was 14 years old. From there, my next door neighbor, Ellie, who still lives next door, she was a waitress at the um, Pancake House in Saugus back then. And she said, we need a dishwasher. Can you come in and help? So I was 15 years old. I was still in school. I worked with her on the weekends from like seven at night until four in the morning, washing dishes. And one night they had a cook that didn't show up and they said, hey, kid, do you want to, uh, you want to try your hand at cooking? And it, and it just blew up from there. I started out at the uh, New England Oyster House in Linfield as a short order cook. I was out front shucking clams and making lobster stew and from there, I went up to the Village Green in Danvers, and I became the head chef there. And I befriended a lieutenant on the Danvers Police Department back then named John Lyons. John was a great guy. He used to come in for lunch a couple of times a week, and he says, uh, what are you going to do when you grow up? I said, well, I thought I was doing it. And he said, well, you need a retirement. You need something for your future. And he says, why don't you try law enforcement? And back then... Chief Chris Boris, Boris was the chief of the Danvers Police Department, and he sponsored me to go to the Reserve Academy, the Reserve Police Academy back in 1984, 40 years ago. And uh, I was a special police officer in the town of Danvers for many years, and then I went over to Middleton as a reserve police officer. All the time I was still cooking. I was doing some small catering back then. Uh, my mother and me, we, we did some cooking. My mother was a fantastic cook. She was uh, she was from from East Boston. She was a stay home mom. She cooked all the traditional Italian food, and from there, I went to Middleton, became a full time police officer. Uh, went up through the ranks. I was a detective. I was the court prosecutor. I was a sergeant. I was a uh, captain, and then in two thousand and seven, I had the uh, fortunate to become the police chief. So I was the police chief from. 2007 until 2021 when I when I retired I retired on my birthday in November and they asked me to stay on as an interim police chief I stayed on until February of that year until they found a permanent chief then I thought I was lost I thought I was just going to do my catering and uh, that was going to be it but I got a phone call a couple of weeks later that they wanted me to go up to South Portland Maine as police chief for a little while. They had a problem finding a chief and uh, the city manager called me up and said, uh, would you like to come up and be our chief? Never, I was never set foot in South Portland until the day I went up there and it was supposed to be a two month gig and that turned into over a year. So I stayed there for a year and they asked me to stay on permanently. But at that time, I, I already did 40 years in law enforcement in Massachusetts and I, I didn't want to do another five. So I declined but I stayed on for a year until they filed a full-time police chief. Left there, and again, I thought I was done. I thought I was going to just go back to my catering full-time, and I got a phone call from Boxboro, and they said they needed a police chief for a little while, and I went down there for about uh, five months and uh, helped them out until they found a permanent chief. And then I uh, was picked up by NEMLIC, which is the Northeastern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council. They asked me, they had a, a problem. They, their executive director left quickly and they needed someone to fill in for a couple of months. That was a year ago, uh, January. They said, uh, would you stay on for three months? And I said, sure. I said, I'll help you out until you find an executive director. And as the months were going by, uh, I don't see any postings for executive director. And finally they came up to me and they said, uh, Jim, uh, we like what you're doing. Would you stay for a year? And I said, you know, I'm having fun. I, I love what I do. I'm still, I'm still in the game. I'm still doing some police work here and there. Uh, yeah, I'll stay for a year. When I went to the president's office to sign my year contract, I looked at the fine print. It's in three years on it. So I guess I signed a three-year contract. So I'm, I'm there for another couple of more years. But in the meantime, I'm still doing my catering. I also work with a couple of assessment companies where we go in and we do police assessments. And we do promotional assessments for law enforcement to, for the rank of sergeant, lieutenant, captains, chiefs. We're all over the state. Um, I'll be I'll be all over the state next next week. I'm, I'm in three different towns next week doing assessments. So, from my law enforcement career, my cooking career, 
it's it's still going strong. I enjoy what I do. I, I love my job, but my real passion is Special Olympics. I uh, I've been the co-director of the Special Olympics since 2007 with Rick Pierce, a retired chief from from Attleboro. I'm also the Region One director of all New England for Special Olympics for the Laura Portman Torch Run, which includes Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire. And I sit on the IACP board, which is the International Chiefs of Police Association board for Special Olympics for the Law Enforcement Torch Run. And you mentioned um, a couple of guests that you've had in the past. I'm on the executive board for the Italian Police Officers Association with them. So that's the connection with those two fellows. Uh, great guys. Uh, we meet once a month. We have our comedy night next Thursday night, the 16th. Uh, you know, we'll be at Giggles in August, trying to raise money. All the money that we raise for the Italian police officers goes to scholarships for uh, law enforcement officers, Italian law enforcement officers, children. So, yeah, I, I'm retired per se, but uh, I'm I'm very busy. That is incredible. Now, as the saying goes, you want a job done, you ask a busy person. And uh, wow, you are busy in retirement. So that is absolutely fabulous. So I applaud you and thank you again for your great career in law enforcement and just continuing it and just making it happen in life. Congratulations on that, Jim. Thank you. That's um, great. I, last year, I did a contract for a homeless shelter up in Danvers. I did lunch and dinner for over a year. Th that again was supposed to be for three months until they, they finished their kitchen and uh, the three months turned into the six, then nine. And it was a, a, just a little bit over a year that I, I supplied a homeless shelter, their lunch and dinner for just over a year. So, I mean, that, that kept me, that kept me busy also. So I get bored very easy, I guess. And well, I, that, that's uh, really something I, I really enjoyed watching. I believe there are two segments on Chronicle. Yeah. You, that was been featured twice uh, with um, Shana. 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 Yeah. Shana. And it's, um, they're both excellent segments. So I do invite our listeners to check in the Chronicle episodes on Jim. And um, you have, I, I was amazed at the number of smokers you have, the number of ovens you have. So tell me about that. How, what is your setup like? Well, it's not exactly what I'd like it to be. I, I mean, I would love it to be a, 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 a huge outdoor kitchen, but as you know, uh, we can only use it for a certain amount of months up here. So it's not really worth it. But I do have, I have a, a pizza oven in my backyard and you can see that on the episode and they came up specifically for that. It came out of an Italian restaurant. It took me five pickup trucks, about six guys, and we had to rebuild it back in my backyard. Uh, it, it's it's fun. I have the big green egg. I got a couple of smokers. I have a couple of grills. I have the tapioca grill for the, the Japanese food. I, I love to entertain. Uh, my backyard is set up perfect for that. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the episode, what happened was I was doing, when COVID hit, I was going out of my mind. I was bored out of my mind. So I decided to do a cooking show on Facebook Live. So every Wednesday I would post the menu and the ingredients in the shopping list. And on Friday night, a friend of mine, Mike, would come over and similar to the way you do, we, we filmed every Friday night at six o'clock on the dot, a cooking show. And it started with a couple of people watching, then a hundred people, and then thousands of people. And it was interactive. People could, they could, um, he would be watching the screen on Facebook live and people would be texting and asking for, you know, did I do this right? Or how did this? So that went on for a good, I think we did 12 episodes and on my, my website, my catering website under the, the videos, all those videos are posted on there. So you can, you can go and you can learn how to make any type of Italian. Well, this is a I don't know. I know you're into the restaurant business. Is it gravy or is it sauce? You tell me. <laughs> there we go. Well, here's my my opinion. But if, if it's gravy, it has meat in it. Exactly. It, it has sausages, brujol. Yep. If it's sauce, it's like a marinara sauce, right? Exactly. And onions, right? Yep. And I, I grew up with the word gravy in my family. My mother always put pink skin brujol. She put oh. the go the go the go. She put spare ribs. And oh. so I, that's how I make it. So I call it gravy. So on one of the episodes, I show how to make a gravy. I show how to make homemade gnocchis. So that was during COVID. 
And from there, it morphed into a cooking show with Special Olympic athletes. I brought in some athletes. They're out on their own, but they, they don't really know how to cook. So we did a couple of episodes where we, we brought in uh, some athletes and we taught them how to make some very easy dishes. And the Boston Globe picked up on that. They came at, to my house and they, they, uh, they did an article on, on myself doing the cooking with the, with the Special Olympic athletes. And then I guess someone from Chronicle picked up from the Boston Globe article and that's where that came. And the catering business is, is good. I mean, I could do a lot more, but I'm right now I'm very picky on what, what I choose because I can be. And the fact is I don't like doing weddings anymore. When I was younger, I did the weddings with the China, the silverware, the, the, the linen. Now it's more, I, I'd rather go into your house and do a a pasta bar where I teach you. It's more of a cooking show and a catering job at the same time. I'll bring in some little cooking surfaces. I'll do uh, ziti, tortellini, angel hair, and I'll bring chicken, shrimp, scallops, squid, mussels, clams. And I can make any dish in under a minute. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great time to do a party for like 30 people. And they all congregate in the kitchen and they learn how to make these dishes. Uh, it, it's fun. I'd much rather do that than the big weddings like I did in the past. I love doing outdoor barbecues. We do a lot of barbecues. We do a lot of clam bakes. Like I said, I can be picky and choose. I can pick and choose what I want to do now. I try to stay away from the china and the silverware and the linens and the glassware. It's just, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be and it's, you know, it's uh, a lot of work. Really is. It really is. But to me, the satisfaction of just seeing the smiles on people's faces. Absolutely. And, and the contentive nature of of how how they're feeling after having a wonderful meal. It's just tremendous. It really, really is great. It's funny you mentioned um, East Boston. I think back to when I used to play at the Paris Street Gym. I lived right across the street from the Paris Street Gym. What, Harbor Street? Harbor Street or... I was on Paris Street. Paris, uh, right on Paris. So Paris and, and Harbor was like right around the corner, right? around right? the corner, yeah. San Topio's was, right? Uh, or is? I was halfway down. I remember when I was four years old looking out my living room window and the church burnt down. And I remember watching that church right on Paris Street burn when I was a kid. But we left when I was five years old, came up to West Peabody, been here ever since. But I had I have a lot of re relatives still in East Boston, yeah. Well, I remember those days fondly. Go to Santapio's, have the lamb, have the pizza, but also it was a treat to go to Javelli's. And if Mama Javelli was cooking, it was like so, so, so cool. And also um, Kelly's Kelly's Pub, maybe? Kelly's Pub, yeah. Is that still there? Why Mastrangelo, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that still open? It is. Is it? I haven't been over there in years. Um, they're really great, but I always have fond memories of um, just going to those restaurants. And I always joke, no wonder why I was a husky. <laughs> Same here. Uh, absolutely. But then I went on the Noon program, so uh, the rest, as they say, is history. And then on the way back, of course, we had to stop off at Cates' Bagels mm -hmm. right over in uh, Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Get that pizza bagel. Oh, boy, I'm getting hungry here. But what, what you described with the different types of um, pasta, just incredible. And I was joking with one of our, our customers at the restaurant the other day about Prince on how they had all the numbered varieties of macaroni and all. Then it's like, okay, which number was mustajoli? What was rigatoni and all that stuff? How, how many numbers were there? Do you, do you know off the top I of your head? I don't know off the top of my head, but I did just uh, about six months ago, went to Italy for the first time and I did oh, nice. a couple of... Uh, Pasta factories. I, I did. I toured them and did some cooking um, demonstrations. It was. It was a lot of fun. Really, that that must have been fun. Huh? It was. It was. Wow. I'm, I'm going back. Um, I we spent two weeks uh, cruising around Italy. We started over in Venice. Went to Rome. Went to Tus Tuscany. Was absolutely gorgeous. Florence and I've always wanted to go. I always wanted to see how they actually how the pasta was created. And, uh, they used to, they, we went to this pasta factory and they had pitches on the wall where they would dry the pasta out in, out in the streets. It was, it was just crazy. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was fun. Interesting. It sounds like a great thing. So, uh, Jim, as we start start to wind down the, the segment and all, how would our listeners reach out to you if they wanted to book a catering gig or they, they wanted to contact you? Cateringalacot.com, all one word would bring it right to our website. The website's very interactive. It has a gallery section where you can see videos, you can see photos of all the foods that we prepare. It has uh, an about me section and it, it tells a little bit of how I went from the police officer to the chef, back to the police officer and back to the chef. So I'm actually in the process of working on a, on a cookbook and in, the title of it is, there's no I in chef. If you put an I in chef, it becomes chief. So <laughs> there's no I in chef. I love it. That's great. And um, that sort of plays into the title of this episode. But if we wanted to buy a vowel, could we? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I love it. Uh, that's super. Now, uh, Special Olympics, I, I think it's really uh, great with the work you're doing with uh, Special Olympics and the torch run. And um, when is that comedy show again? May 16th at Giggles. It is open to the public. We have we have space open. Uh, I think it's $25 a ticket. You get all the pizza you can eat and a great comedy show. And like I said, all the money that we raise goes to the scholarships that we, we put out on our bank, our yearly banquet in October. Um, so Special Olympics is, is, uh, and like you said, it, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, when I was a new chief, I had a Special Olympic, uh, representative come into my office and says, do you know anything about it? And back then I didn't. And by the time she left my office, we had a, a run from Middleton police to the Danvers Pol state police barracks all booked and from there, it's just been nonstop, like I said. Uh, and Special Olympics has been great to me. They've, they've sent me all around the world. I've gone, I, in 2011, I represented the state of Massachusetts as a, one of 100 police officers. I ran in the, um, the World Games for Special Olympics in Greece. I spent 30 days there. Probably one of the best times of my life. Wow. And how many years ago was that? 2011. 2011. It's 13 years ago. Wow. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, Jim, I want to thank you again for your law enforcement work and continued law enforcement work, I guess, and um, also filling the bellies of, of many, many, many people with such wonderful cuisine. But uh, okay, I'll ask this question. What is your favorite dish of all time to make? I call it lobster gravy. It is okay. lobster uh, in a spaghetti sauce. Uh, okay. It's been, it's something that my mother instilled upon us as a ch child. And I do the, uh, the feast of the seven fishes every nice. Christmas Eve. And oh. unfortunately both my parents passed away and they were the hosts for many, many, many years of that tradition. And I kept it going. So I usually have about 45 people for dinner on Christmas Eve. And we do the, we do the baked stuff shrimp, the, the fried shrimp. We do the squid we do the stuffed squid we do the lobster gravy um what else do we do we do the eel it, it's just i spend two days cooking and i love it that i wouldn't want it any other way i i enjoy that wow did you have the smelts uh you know something we never had the smelts um we do a fried shrimp instead of the fried smelts okay um i i do like smelts but not a lot of people do they don't like the bone so and I'm not going to sit there and pick it out for him. So right, exactly. But if you really crunch them up, it's okay to, oh, yeah. to eat the bone, right? I, I'll eat the bone. I have no problem eating the bone. But that's uh, yeah, that no, and the Filippo Barrio olive oil, right? Absolutely. Oh, the Elena, oh, one of those. So, but I'll have to get them as a sponsor now. Uh, now that I've mentioned that, but uh, Jim, one more time, how do um, how do our listeners contact you? Cateringalacot.com, all one word. That puts you right into our website, and uh, you can get in touch with me through the website. There's there's portals there that you can email email me. I just suggest everybody goes on there and just check out the gallery, see see some of the stuff that we we do. Some of the I I'm not the type of person when I go to a a catering job and just put a tray on a on a, on a table. I dress it up with lights, flowers, and then I do a lot of fruit and animal sculptures. And you can see all those on the website. So, wow, that's that's tremendous. 
Well, Jim, again, thank you, and um, look forward to uh, sampling maybe that lobster gravy one day. Anytime. Another one is my favorite part. Do you like tripe? You know, I haven't had it in a long time. can be kind of salty, but yet if it's prepared properly, you know, it's, it's something that, that I would, um, would try. All right. I'll bring, you know, I, I usually host the Italian uh, board of directors here, and we, we eat for like four hours. So uh, one of those times I'll bring you up in one of our meetings. Oh, that, that'd be fabulous. Maybe we'll get Marty and Dominic there. They'll be there. They're, they're always there. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, Jim, again, thank you so much and um, keep up the great work. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Chef, you're welcome, Chef Jim TG, as you know, right? You got it. Hashtag indeed. I trust that you have enjoyed Hashtag Paul Ponders. Again, my name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com to do some more pondering. Many thanks to my longtime collaborative friend and associate, Alonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, in bringing you our fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. You rock, Techie Chalonzo. With PS and All Marketing Group, I created a side gig to connect you and get things done. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me at paul at paulponders.com with any questions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Paul Ponders. Follow us on Twitter at Paul Ponders Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Paul Ponders Podcast. Thank you again for listening to Hashtag Paul Ponders, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our website, paulponders.com, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment, Hashtag Paul Ponders lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com hashtag the new radio until we meet again my friend stay well hashtag indeed